All right, here is the version three of the seven segment digit. This version has made a number of improvements over the previous version two. Check that video out, link in the description. In this video, I'm gonna go over first, the improvements that I've made to each of the components of this new version. And then second, part two will be a tutorial similar to the previous video of how to assemble this new version. Since version three has been redesigned from the ground up, none of the components from version two are compatible with this new release. Going forward, version 3 will be the foundational design for all future upgrades, releases, and model variations, including motor operation, a 12 and 24 hour clock, and other variations of the 7 segment display, including alpha and numeric characters. This one uses 31 3D printed components, a few less than the previous version 2. This one still does use two rubber bands. Introduced with version three are these two springs in particular. These are 50 millimeter springs, but I'll get into the details on these here shortly. With this new version three, all prototyping was performed on a new printer that I've added to my shop. That is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. With that new printer, I was further able to improve the dimensions and tolerances between various components. And lastly, many of these improvements were influenced by the comments and feedback that I received across the platforms. Thank you for your support. All right, I'm gonna quickly go over the updates that have been made since the previous version. Starting with the body here, it is now 10 millimeters deeper to account for the increased depth of the uh, various components that I'll go into uh, right after this. Also added a little support here around the base of the screw shaft to help support the seg plate. The back plate has countersunk screw holes that go together with the new countersunk screws. All right, so the seg plate, a few changes. First, dual guide paths for the segments. The D segment or center segment now snaps into place so it doesn't fall out. There's now a location for a dedicated D segment rubber band. The height of these extrusions here have been increased, allowing for greater support of the D cams. Six pegs have been added to the seg plate as a guide path for the rubber band that'll react with the slide of each of the segments. Each peg has a dimple that will help guide or keep the rubber band at a specific height. The height of these dimples will line up perfectly with new hooks that I've added to each of the segments for the rubber band. The mid plate, the depth of these teeth have been in increased to help with the contact of the inner spring arms on the springs. And then also the rubber band has been replaced with two coil springs. The segments are now a single printed piece. The follower and segment are now combined together in one single file, no more gluing required. The cams have been improved, a couple of things. Uh, number one, every cam has a disc built in, and what that does is creates a guided path for the segment followers to ride inside, eliminating uh, version 2's issue of these falling out of alignment with the respective cam. And then the other update, the pattern of the shaft here has been uh, upgraded from its previous square shape to a five-point star but with a bridge between two of the points to act as a key for a proper orientation uh, install of the cams. There are now two types of spring and spring drum. One of them has an R. Likewise, it's matching spring has an R. So make sure the two R's always stay as a pair and the two non-R's stay as a pair. And basically they are just opposites or inverted of each other that when they are installed into the mid plate, depending on the order, whether the R is at the top or the R is at the bottom, that will change the order of counting from either forward or reverse. The size of the gears here that attach to the tops of the cam stacks have now been increased in diameter and they directly mesh with each other as opposed to needing the two intermediate gears off to the side. These are now together. And finally, the push action. The height of the push action is, has been increased for rigidity 
and it now has a symmetrical design with pegs. This is compatible with either the forward or reversing orientation of the spring drums since the arms will change when you flop them. So there is a peg here to account for each scenario. In addition, these two uh, extrusions here, these now make contact with the springs, the new coil springs on the mid plate. All right, here we have the layout of the new cams. Similar to version two, these will stack accordingly on the respective D cam. Just like the previous version, the order of the stack will start with D, followed by C, B, then A. So let's put those together. So here we have the D1 cam. Let's put C on there first. So we'll line that up, followed by B, and then A. And then we'll move on to D2. So first C2, B2, and A2. We'll set these cams aside for a second and we'll bring in the seg plate. So let's go ahead and install the D segment. So to install this, you look at the D right side up, place that into the slot and then push up and down or in towards the seg plate to snap that in. Make sure that free falls. At this stage, you wanna install the rubber band. There is a indent that will contain or hold the D segments rubber band. So let's install that. So after installing the D segment, we can now bring back in the cam stacks. Take the number one stack that does not have the profile for the center segment. That one installs here. Of course, making sure that all the text is right side up. So, you know, you have the correct orientation of the seg plate. And then we can install stack number two here on the bottom. Uh, this is the one that will engage with the center segment. So I like to just push this out of the way and then drop this on there. Of course, you can give it a test. Make sure that it operates that D segment smoothly. The home position for this seven segment uh, is just like the previous one where the arrows that are shown here at the tops of each of the D cams point in towards each other. All right, so the next step, we can go ahead and install the segments here. So after the D segment, uh, the six remaining segments only have three different types. We have the A's, the B's, and the C's. So the A's will be installed in these two corners, the B's these two corners, and the C's will take the ends here. All right, let's start with the C's. And then to the B's. And finally the A's. All right, so just to make sure everything went together uh, correctly, you can just give a check at this stage to make sure that all your segments slid correctly into their corresponding uh, gap there between the, the, the cam discs. So your C, of course, is going to be the lowest. That's going to be just above that lowest disc. B is going to be the second. And then A is going to rest right here on the um, top cam. One other thing that could benefit um, the, the, the operation of this, sometimes they don't um, slide together uh, for too long. They'll, they'll work at first just fine, but after a a, a few cycles, they start to seem to develop some, some friction. Um, so I've found some success in using lubrication like this one right here. So this uh, super lube, uh, I've used this as well as this is a liquid bearing. The label on this fell off, but this is, I believe it was called liquid bearings. And it just has this long, uh, this applicator. It's really nice for getting into tight spaces, but what I'll 
is when I when I install one of these segments is I will lay a little bit of lubrication here on the surface and then kind of work that in and then also on the back side here and that tends to uh, reduce that issue so if you assemble this thing and it works fine in the beginning but then you notice after tens of cycles it starts to seem to want to bind up especially on the number one the number seven and also I've noticed it on the number four I have found that adding lubrication tends to um, eliminate that so that's the first location I'll add lube and then the second one let me uh, let me pull in an A segment so this is a little easier to see. So just like installing the lubrication to the slide path of the segment, I will also add a little bit here on the profile, really just a dab right there at the tip, and then I'll work it in a few a few rotations and, and similarly do this on the other segments. And, and and that seems to have solved the problem. I, I have a... All right, so then to hold these segments in place as well as create the spring force, we'll bring in the rubber band here. So the rubber band will wrap around these six posts. So we'll pull this rubber band around the outer four. And then we need to pull the rubber band inside the center ones. And then making sure that the rubber band rests inside the hooks of each of the segments. As well as the grooves on each of these posts. And at this point, you could just give it a little test to make sure everything functions. We can bring in the body and drop the seg plate into it, making sure that that seats all the way. So now with that in place, we can bring in the two uh, timing gears. Uh, there are two different types here, as you can see, marked with a one or a two. Uh, e either of these can be interchangeable. They don't have to be necessarily installed on, a, on the corresponding one or two. I'll just take the one and I'll put that on the, the number one stack, lining up the shape of the star there. And then the second one will just drop right onto the number two stack. And I'll point out here real quick that each of these has a little triangle or arrow. And the intent here is that those line up perfectly once they're installed. So moving on to the next step, I'll bring in the mid plate. That just falls right into place here, making sure that seats all the way. All right, so moving on to the springs and spring drums. All right, so in, in this example, I'm going to install the uh, spring and spring drums in the configuration that has this seven segment count in the forward sequence. Uh, the first one I grabbed here does have the R. So we'll put that there down there at the bottom with the open side facing down, lining up the profile of the D-cam there, making sure that's seated all the way. Likewise, the non-R uh, for forward counting will be installed in the upper position. And then likewise, the corresponding drums. So this one has the R, so this one will go along with the R. So a little tip here, regardless of which configuration you have the springs in, whether R's here, or at the top, uh, the R's arm on the drum will always point to the right. So if this one was installed up here, this arm would be pointing to the right up in that upper spot. Likewise, the drum without the R, its arm here will always point to the left, regardless of what spot it's in. All right, so next I'll bring in the two springs. Uh, in particular, these are 50 millimeter by four millimeter springs. So to install these springs, slide these into these slides here. And then the push action. So dropping this on, lining up those 
pegs to fall into the slots on the spring drums, keeping just a little bit of pressure, pull the spring down, and then that just falls right into place. And of course you can give it a test, make sure everything functions correctly. All right, so now we can install the back plate. So dropping that onto place, everything falls in. You have the new countersunk screws. See, so you have a nice flush finish there. Nothing sticking out on the back side. Last thing will be the push button. So the uh, tolerances here on the push button and the push action have been reduced. So now this thing is a nice snap on. And there we have it. So let's test this. And there we go. All right, seems like a success.